All right, thanks for staying with us. We are back. I'm with my buddy Chris Tremblay, uh, head teaching instructor at the Island Golf School in JPGA. Um, those of you who may not know, I just found this out, Chris was in the top 50 instructors in the country. I've been mentioned there before, yes. Yeah, and in, and in the current 500. Uh, so this guy knows what he's talking about when it comes to golf. And in this segment, we're talking, well, out of the 14 clubs in the bag, sometimes, of them are sometimes wedges. three or four of them are wedges. That's why, right. Why is that? Well, there's so many things to do around the greens today. As time has gone on, green speeds have increased, dictating maybe a few more creative shots around the green. Starting in the late 80s, sand wedges, started to go from 56 degrees to 58 degrees to 60 degrees. Titleist even makes a 62 and a 64 now. So we have a lot of options around the green. So one thing I'd like to talk about today is maybe what is the best setup for your bag. Personally, I have, if I may borrow this for a sec, Daniel, I have a pitching wedge in my bag that is, right here, we'll bring out the pitching wedge. The pitching wedge right here is about 47 degrees. Then I have a 52 degree wedge right there, and a 56 degree wedge. And on special occasions, based on how severe the golf course is, I have a 60 degree wedge. Why would I want to go ahead and carry all these wedges? Well, it depends on the lie my ball could have around the greens and the shot I'm trying to hit. Like I said, I only put the 60 degree wedge in my bag if I'm playing a golf course where maybe I don't need one of my hybrids, because that's usually the, court or the club that I throw out. The greens might be small, quick, slightly elevated to help me pop the ball up in the air. So that's an option for our viewers is you can always have an extra wedge and if it's not really needed for the course you're playing, put another club in the bag. And the best players in the world, I mean, they're known for doing that very frequently, week in, week out perhaps. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And you know, you look at Rory McIlroy, his set makeup, instead of having a what we'll call a consistent four or six degree difference in his clubs. For instance, like I said, I go from 47 to 52 to 56, and if I need a 60, he goes from 46 right up to 54, and then a 60, and he's found that's what works for him. Wow. So it really depends on the individual and what really aids their game, and you know, based on what he's doing out there on tour, I don't think we're gonna disagree with no, the methodology I, the, the results that he's using. Themselves. Very much so. Now, after we talk about what might be the best lofts for your wedges and what you might have in your bag, then you have to look at something else when it comes to your wedge, and that is the amount of bounce on the club. Mm. Okay, and what is bounce? Well, simply put, and if I take my wedge here and bring it over, you're going to see when I hold it straight up and down how the leading edge, this part of the club right here, is up off the ground when I hold the shaft at vertical. What's on the ground right now is what we call the trailing edge. If you have a club with a little bit more bounce, the club is going to be more like that. If you have one with less bounce, the leading edge is going to be closer to the ground. Hmm. So we have some different options. Why might we want these? Well, if you're somebody who swings and is a big divot taker, that's mm -hmm. just the way you swing, you come down into the ball a little Descending, steeper, yeah. that's what you want is a club with a little bit more bounce. In other words, you want that leading edge up off of the ground higher. So are, are you saying that a bounce can actually forgive a, a, a bad shot? Uh, it can help so you to hit the ball a little cleaner and not dig in quite as deep. Gotcha. Okay. Clubs with more bounce are also better if you play down in Florida, especially where the sand is very powdery. Mm -hmm. When you're dealing with more powdery sand, having a sand wedge with a little bit more bounce can help you get through the sand easier as opposed to those of you that have swung and hit a bunker shot before and had it go in and just dig right in and stop. Right, right, right. You know, that's an example of one that, a sand wedge that needs a little bit more bounce for you. Gotcha. So those are some examples of why you'd want a little bit more bounce or a little bit less bounce. So uh, te testing the texture of the sand is going to determine some sometimes Yes. How, you, how you may play those shots. And definitely for the more serious golfer that, you know, is playing in tournaments and really is into his game, it's not a bad idea if your 56 degree club or your 58 is your sand club, maybe having one with about 14 degrees of bounce and one with about 8 degrees of bounce. Because when you get into sand that's a little bit more wet, a little tighter, a little bit more like clay, just for lack of a better term, right. having a club with a little less loft is something you're looking, or a little bit less um, bounce, I'm sorry, is what you're looking for there. Super. Okay. Now, one of the things I'd like to hit on real quick, and I'm going to have you be my man, I'm going to give sure. you my 56, if you'd be kind enough to come in here and just grip the club for me. Around here, 
we have a lot of opportunities for your ball to sit down around the green. In other words, the ball is almost sitting down on the dirt, but you're right next to the green and you've got a shot where you've got some green. So I want you to give this a try at home. Instead of swinging your wedge, more in a swinging fashion on these little chip shots you have, I'd like you to go ahead and start to employ your putting stroke a little bit to help you get these shots not only a little bit cleaner, but also get them a little closer to the hole. So Daniel, if you'd be kind enough to get your feet just a touch closer together for me, take your putting grip. Is that your putting grip? Um, no. Take your putting grip for me. Okay. We're going to go ahead and put the club back here so it's even with your right foot and put your hands up by your left thigh. Okay. Okay. Now what I'd like you to do for me, now that I've got it set there, I'm going to take this away and I'd like you to make your putting stroke for me right there and tell me what that feels like. Go ahead. It feels stiff. It feels stiff. Yeah, and this is where people get in a lot of trouble with their wedge play is they tend to get too wristy. Right. And by employing the putting stroke around the green with, like I said before, this setup where the ball's back by your right foot and your hands are up by your left thigh and keeping that in that action is going to help you hit the ball a little cleaner and get it closer to the hole. So we're going to do more wedge tips as we go down the road, but for today that's where we're going to start. And that's all the time we got. It goes by quickly. Guys, that's the best way to prove your game quickly. Short game, and you can't do that Big without stroke saver. Can't do it without wedges. Uh, it's been a great show, and we appreciate all our guests, all our sponsors, and you, buddy. Enjoy. Um, it. Come see us next week.